It's time for a PC build video. Everybody loves building new computers except for one thing, the price. Building a new computer is expensive, there's no way around that. So we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna be doing a second hand PC build guide. Most of these parts I've collected over the years and if I was going to build a second hand PC today, I would probably use a lot of the same components with the exception of probably the graphics card. Uh, but we'll talk about that at the end of the video. Let's start with the foundation of every computer, the CPU. The CPU I'll be using is the legendary Sandy Bridge i5-2500K, arguably one of the best bang for the buck gaming CPUs in its day. And because of its great overclocking performance, it's still viable now. You can find these chips online for around 45 bucks, which I personally think is a great price given my experience using them, so I'm thinking go for it. Buying a CPU secondhand comes with a lot of unknowns. You really never know exactly how it was treated, how high it was overclocked, how well it was cooled. So I always recommend getting the seller to at least prove that it still works. And if you can't get them to show you that it works, make sure there's a good return process in place so that it is bricked, you're not stuck with something that doesn't work. For motherboards, we're gonna be using this. This is a Z77 Extreme 4 from Azeroc. And I'm going to tell you guys, uh, I'm kind of shocked at how much these things still go for. I was not able to find this board on eBay or anywhere online for less than 150. So I would definitely recommend looking for something a little cheaper like this Z77 board from Gigabyte that you could get right now on eBay for like 75 bucks. For CPU cooling, I went with this. This is the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo. And um, I went with an air cooler over an AIO basically for price only because you can get one of these new. I got that one new on Amazon for $22. Uh, when it comes to overclocking, we'll find out if that was a good idea or a bad idea. So stay tuned for that one. For RAM, I would recommend at least 16 gigs. The RAM I will be using is this. This is a Corsair Vengeance. Uh, this is DDR3, 1600 megahertz. Now I have four sticks that are four gigs each, giving me 16. Um, I like to have four sticks, kind of one of those guys that likes to have all his dim slots populated, but you might be able to save some money here by looking for a kit that maybe is two by eight. Uh, that's a little cheaper because this is still going for $23 like a stick. So that's kind of high. Our storage and boot drive will be the Samsung 850 Evo, 500 gig. And I'm gonna say, I recommend going SSD here, hands down. I mean, if you're thinking about saving some money by using a hard drive, um, the speed boost you get from using SSD is greatly worth the cost. And you can get an 850 Evo on eBay for like 65 bucks. So it's definitely worth going SSD. Now for the heart and soul of any gaming computer, the GPU. Now I would recommend spending as much money as you can in this area because the better your GPU, the better your gaming performance. I will be starting out with the humble GTX 580 from EVGA, uh, basically because I had one and you can get those online for like 52 bucks. However, after we get the system up and running and tested, we're gonna upgrade it to the 1080 and we're gonna see how much of a boost that gives you in performance because you can find one of those secondhand online for about 350, 400 bucks. And for our power supply unit, we'll be using a knockoff brand, Extreme Power, which I got from a CyberPower PC many, many, many years ago. Uh, this model is extremely overpowered. It's like a thousand watts. And when I got this PSU, people online were like, this thing is trash. It's never gonna last longer than a year. However, I got it like way back in 2011 and the thing is still going. So hats off to that thing. Now, if you're gonna do something like this, I would recommend getting something kind of like an EVGA 600B, which is a lot lower in power, better for the system. Um, also, it's only $30. It's not 80 plus gold or anything like that, but it is cheap and it's made by a reputable brand. Uh, the case, the case is basically up to you. I would recommend looking for something functional yet affordable. Uh, for example, this mid tower case I found on Newegg for 19 bucks. And it also comes with fans. Fans are something many people kind of overlook and they're, you're gonna need them. So make sure that whatever case you do get comes with some fans. Also, when looking at case, make sure you have adequate space for your CPU cooler. If you have an AIO for radiator mounting, um, make sure your graphics card's gonna fit if there's a bunch of like hard drive cages. Um, if it only comes with 3.5 inch drives and drive bays and you're gonna use an SSD, make sure you get the adapter mount, you know, just stuff like that. Uh, make sure to cover all your bases to make sure that you're not gonna have any issues when you get to building. For my case, I'm using an old NZXT case that's not the prettiest case anymore, but it does do the job. And if it ain't broken, don't fix it. So let's get to building. The first thing I like to do is make sure all my case fans that I'm gonna be needing are in place. So like the exhaust fan, and if you're not gonna have a radiator, the two intake fans at the front, I can get them all set up and in there so I don't have to dig around things uh, later on. Next, grab your motherboard. The first thing we're gonna do is inspect the board because we got this thing secondhand, so we're, we gotta make sure it's not damaged. It's better to find it now than uh, when you hit the button for power and nothing happens. The big thing you wanna do is pay close attention to the socket. Uh, especially if you got this thing and it didn't come with a socket cover, something like this, um, you really want to pay attention to make sure there's no damage to it. If you're using an Intel chipset uh, like myself 
for your CPU, then you're gonna be using the LGA socket or a land grid array. This basically means that the contact pins are on the socket themselves. So you need to pay close attention to see if they're damaged. You might need some magnification, they're quite small. So you basically just wanna look for damage, missing or bent pins. Um, as you can see on my board, there looks to be one pin that might actually be bent, but since this is my board and it had a CPU on it and I removed it, I'm gonna leave it alone for now, but if it does have boot issues, we know where to look. Now, if you're using an AMD socket, you're most likely gonna be using a PGA socket or a pin grid array. And this is essentially the exact opposite of an Intel socket uh, where the contact pins are now located on the CPU rather than the socket itself. So the socket is more hardy, harder to damage, but you just wanna make sure that there's nothing you know, jammed in there. Now take your CPU and align the gold triangle with the blunt end or matching triangle of your socket. Lower the GPU into the socket and set it into the socket with no pressure. Now lower your retention plate and make sure to fully engage the retention arm so your CPU stays secure. Now I'm using an air cooler, so I like to install it now because it makes the motherboard easier to handle. Um, however, if I'm doing a build with an AIO, I normally wait till the end, especially if there's like a large cutout in my case. Um, I'll install the AIO like last because it's easier to like not have a big giant radiator hanging off your motherboard as you're trying to get it into the case. Choose the correct backplate based on what you're using, AMD or Intel. Uh, mine's Intel, so I'll be using this one. Position it behind the motherboard and install the standoffs. Next, make sure to apply your thermal compound to your CPU in your preferred application method. Now take your cooler and make sure to remove the plastic covering on the bottom of your cooling plate and set it over top of your CPU, screwing it down in place. This is also a good time to find the, you know, the fan header for your cooler so you can install that now so you don't have to dig around for it later. Um, if you're using an AIO, some boards have designated pump headers, so go ahead and find that one if you're using an AIO. Now for the RAM. First, open all the DIMM slots that you'll be using. For me, it's all four. If you're only using two, then make sure to install your RAM in the correct configuration to take advantage of dual channel memory. A quick search of your board online will tell you which sockets to use, but normally it's sockets two and four or one and three. Next, we're gonna install the motherboard IO shield. All you need to do is to take it and make sure it's aligned correctly and in the correct orientation and just simply press it into place and listen for the click. At this point, it's always good practice to power up your motherboard before you go ahead and install it in your case. This is going to save you some time and uh, effort down the line if something doesn't boot. Or you can be like me and just say, you know what, YOLO, let's just throw that in there and hope it works. With your IO shield installed, look to make sure your case has the proper standoffs installed for the motherboard that you're gonna be using. I'm using an ATX board, so I'm gonna verify that all the ATX motherboard stands are in place. You might have to add some or remove some based on the board size and type you're using. Now holding the motherboard by the cooler, lower it in place, aligning with the IO shield, just kind of making sure not to scrape against any standoffs. You just wanna get it kind of in place, align all your mounting holes, and then install your screws, making sure not to over tighten them, just get them snug and make sure that your motherboard's not gonna move. Now it's time to install the GPU. The GPU will be installed in a PCI Express 16 slot, normally the closest one to the CPU. So just open the retaining latch, install your graphics card in the proper slot until you hear the latch clip, and then install your Phillips screws to hold it in place. Now for your SSD, just find the best place that you want to mount it and make sure you have the correct mounting hardware to uh, fasten it in place. And then just check to make sure you have, you know, ample cable lengths for both your SATA and power to reach your motherboard and PSU. One of the last things I always install is my power supply unit. So if your PSU is modular, make sure to only install the leads you're gonna need because it makes cable management easier. Uh, mine's not, so rip me. After you have the power supply installed, it's basically just time to do some cable management. The only thing that can be a bit tricky in this case is the front panel connectors. The best thing to do here is just kind of look at your motherboard's manual or look it up online to see which headers uh, are for which you know, front panel connector. It's kind of difficult, but sometimes you can find good resources to tell you which one's which, and you're just simply gonna plug them in place. And there it is, in all of its glory. It may not be the best looking thing, but that's not the point. The point is to build a cost-effective gaming solution, so let's see how it performs. But before we get started, I'm gonna overclock my CPU slightly just to get the most out of our system. And then we'll do some initial testing and how it sits now, and then we're gonna swap out the 580 for the 1080, and see what kind of performance boost you can expect by just upping your GPU budget. Okay, so everything's hooked up, and if you noticed, um, the power supply is different now. So I made the big deal about the power supply lasted so many years, everybody said it was gonna die, it would never break. I put it in there, tried to fire it up, and yeah, it was broken. So I dug this one out of my current system to get this thing fired up, but we're up and running. Um, I, the CPU, I got it overclocked just to 4.1, nothing crazy. Um, it's staying though red, relatively cool. Uh, the GPU is the 580, so we're going to give that a go. Everything's going to be, you know, we're going to run it at 1080p resolution, just kind of see how what kind of gaming performance we get. So the first game we're going to check out, of course, is Overwatch. 
So the 580 is an old card, so it doesn't have any display port or anything like that. So we're going to be using DVI on the old Cat Leap monitor. Uh, but for now, we'll just see how it runs. So 1080p presets are high and we're rocking right now 94 FPS, which isn't bad for high presets um, in Overwatch on the 580. Uh, definitely playable. I mean, yeah, we're sticking right about 115, 100, you know, right around a 90 to 115 ups and downs, but definitely playable. So let's try something else. Okay, so now we're in Apex Legends, one of the new games that came out, and we're going to see how well um, this old card runs this new game. So we are sitting at... So right now the game's set at 1080p and almost as low as you can possibly get on the graphics. And in this cave, we're sitting at about 60, 55 FPS. Uh, we'll see how good we get when we get outside. Yeah, 40, 45. I saw a low of 39. So it is playable, but it's, you know, it's, not, the, it's not the best experience, I'd say. So we're going to try an actual game of Apex because the frame rate's kind of low in just a training range. So we need to see if it's even playable like online. So we'll see how this goes. Um, in the loading screen that's all black, we got 60. So there you go. Okay, so in the ship right now, we're sitting at like 30 FPS. So uh, we'll see how this goes. Yeah, falling down here, 25 FPS. So yeah, not the best experience. Definitely does feel sluggish for sure. Well, we're about 30 now. I mean, 36. Not ideal, but definitely a lot better than 25. Well, I could get a gun that be great. Oh, great. Punch him. 28 FPS. Yeah, 27. This one's a little rough on the old 580. Okay, let's try a game that's not an FPS. This is uh, Diablo 3, a dungeon crawler. So lower frame rates aren't as bad in a dungeon crawler or a game like this. So we'll see what it does. So actually, we're sitting about 90 right now. So we'll see what our settings are. So right now our settings are pretty much high presets, uh, 1080p of course, and we're setting about 92 FPS. And uh, definitely very, very playable, um, especially since it's not an FPS, you don't need those super high frame rates, but it's not bad having a 105, you know, out of an old system like that, especially a graphic card that costs $52. But um, if somebody's gonna do this, build a used system, you're probably not gonna get something as old as a 580, you're probably gonna look for something like a 1060, or like a 980 so let's upgrade the graphics card and see if the system causes any kind of bottlenecks we'll play the same games and see exactly uh what our performance looks like with a better graphics card so we'll be right back okay so now we're back we have the 1080 in there so now we can take advantage of both screens since this has a display port um the cooler actually is working pretty good we're sitting about 52 degrees celsius on our cpu which is pretty good for an air cooler with just a slight overclock i'm sure we can get a little bit higher of an overclock if we wanted to um, the fan's a little loud. I'm sure we could tone it down if we changed our, you know, our fan curves. But for the most part, it's doing good. And uh, the new graphics card is in and the new drivers are installed. So let's see how it's working. Uh, these are the same settings. Still 1080p high presets um, in Overwatch, uh, the practice range. And we're at 160, 70, 170 FPS. So of course, you know, we're going to have much better performance with this graphics card versus the 580. So let's check out, uh, see if Apex is playable now, because that'd be great. So at the same settings, flying in uh, now with the 1080, we are at 90 frames per second over 25. So it's a much, much, much better experience. You can actually play the game now, which is kind of what you're going for when you build a gaming PC. Yeah, so running around on the ground right now, we're about 115, 120, 130 FPS, which is obviously much better than our 25 before. So the game is actually playable now, and you're actually going to have a good time. We could go look at Diablo, but I'm assuming that since it ran with the 580 like at 100 fps it'd run just fine with the 1080 so it just shows you what you can get out of a used system um with the big point being just make sure you get the best graphics card you can i mean obviously the 580 was able to play the game some of them not very good but you know playable and things like diablo and overwatch and it could get you through and it's only 52 bucks but if you have a little bit more extra money to spend on a graphics card obviously the closer you can get to current gen the better your system's going to be and this cpu is still working great so right now the Package temperature is 50, 53 degrees C at a 4.1 gigahertz overclock. So we have a little bit more extra room to overclock if we wanted to, but we're running just fine. The system's running great. So this shows what you can get for a system this cheap, and I'll put the uh, the final build price for with the 580 down below so you can see how much something like this would cost you if you were to build it with a 580. And then obviously if you were to upgrade your GPU, the price would go up, you know, a little bit based on how much more you spend on your GPU. But thank you for watching. This is Major Hardware. Make sure if you like this video to give it a thumbs up. If you consider getting subscribed, that'd be great. You can hang around, see some more future videos. It would just be an awesome time. So thank you again for watching. We'll see you in the next one.